Welcome to Archery Country Podcast. Welcome back, everybody, to Archery Country Podcast. This is your host, Big Wade, is we are rocking and rolling right in the midst of the season, and we just got done with a super cool season. Well, it's actually not done, but bear hunting. And today, we have Mr. Keith Pelt, John, who's one of the bad cats here at the Rogers location, one of our bow technicians, and also a master of disaster when it comes to killing stuff. So we got a lot of requests. Keith, thank you for coming on this morning. Morning, buddy. So we got a lot of requests. A, uh, we've had a couple hunting stories. <clears throat> I started it kind of, I don't know, three, two years ago with wide load. We kind of broke it down and we just, we, we mixed a little mid-season preparation, mid-season evaluation of your equipment. And then I told the story about wide load and how I'd shot him twice and it went over very well. We had a ton of downloads. And in the hunting industry, during the middle of the season, there's a lot of guys that are traveling, and we get a lot of comments on, when are you going to tell your next hunting story? When you know, Not so much the techie and the tips and the gadgets and the what we have for new releases, because we are mostly that on our podcast. But today's going to be a hunting story. Uh, Keith is promised me, after he shot his bear, that he would do this. Uh, he's not a guy that really likes to put himself in the spotlight, but I'm a guy that likes to put him in the spotlight, because this is a super cool feat. Not just every day do you draw a bear tag in the state of Minnesota, especially in the zone that you were in. And we don't have to talk about locations or zones or wherever it matters. Yeah, we can. That's fine. Is it 51? Uh, 46. 46? Yep. Dan is 51. Dan's 51. Okay. Yep. Yep. So you're in 46, which is up northern Minnesota. Correct. Yep. All right. So I'm basically going to hand you the reins to this horse, and you run with it, and I'm going to ask some questions. And these are really, truly, honestly, Keith is told me the story and i've asked him questions already so it's kind of preloaded but it's not i have questions because when we take somebody through a story a hunting situation especially bears i've never shot a bear never been around bear hunting i've never actually touched a bear besides a mounted one i'm gonna have some questions i'm gonna you know what you do different and all that but you uh you get a pretty cool relationship with your brother and you guys drew both of you drew tags yep and if i believe um, he didn't go on Montana's. You're, yep, yeah. He so <clears throat> he was going to uh, he had a Montana elk tag. He planned on going to use. Ended up getting sick. Um, not long before he was heading out to Montana, kind of had to stop his you know physical training to go out by, and he's going by himself, so he needs to get gotcha. in good shape. And uh, planned on I was going to hunt the first week or two, uh, by myself. And then when he got back, he was going to go up, you know, and ended up, he ended up not going on his Montana trip and opted to just, you know, he was good enough to come up here and hunt. So we went up together, which was kind of nice. That is cool. Yeah. And is there other guys in camp? Yep. In camp. Yeah. We had the only two tags this year. Um, we've got some really good friends up there. Um, my buddy Nate and uh, his uncle Donnie, they give us access to their, you know, hunting shack and kind of, you know, help us out with where to go and that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, I've been involved with it with those guys long enough to kind of have an idea too. And we found a, found a couple spots this year that worked out really well. And, and the, is this where you deer hunt or you have, I have. Yep. Yep. Okay. Usually if, if I rifle, like if I firearm hunt Minnesota, that's usually where I'm at up with okay. those guys. Um, gotcha. and then there's another guy, Jason, who's a big, big bear guy. He's actually from down here, but he's buddies with them too. And he's, uh, he loves, he loves bear camp. So he comes up no matter who has a tag and, we were glad he did this year. So I'm kind of getting the the idea that this is more of a camaraderie um, just because it takes quite a few years for an individual to draw a tag besides no quota zones. Right. Um, it's kind of like a deer camp, but bear camp in a sense. You know, we've had some customers that come in, um, not a lot of success stories this year, but how there's multiple individuals involved. Right. Yep, absolutely. Um, because there's a lot of work involved to what, you guys are doing right yeah so if you wouldn't mind like take us you guys got you know i was i was here when you, you went online you, you know that you got drawn and then you and your brother got drawn or he got a tag like from that moment take us through the planning part and for those of you that don't bear hunt what i'm talking about is baiting preparation and stand locations and what you're going to do cameras now there's a certain time then you you can only bait like you can't bait all of june and july 
Right. Yeah. This year it was August 12th, um, was the, the opener for baiting. So you, you could start August 12th and then you, you started hunting Labor Day. I don't remember when you guys. Started. Yeah. It was the, the first was opener September okay. 1st. So, yep. All right. So take us through, you guys get on the, the phone and you text each other. I got a bear tag, you know, it's however many years and then the preparation and I'll kind of beat in here with a couple questions going good, on that. Good. I'll need you. <laughs> uh so yeah we ended up uh we actually tried to stagger like everybody in that group tries to stagger when we put it you know like when you start putting in so that we don't you know we can overlap and kind of just leapfrog each other so everybody some somebody should have a tag every year um my brother actually drew a year sooner than we thought he would so he we were anticipating him drawing after me um but we both drew the same year which kind of worked which worked out really well um from then it's you know we talked to the guys up north i got another buddy dave and his son jack were huge in helping us with baiting and stuff this year when we you know the days we couldn't get up there um so yeah we have some areas we know um we actually had a um a spot that we have deer cameras out typically that we deer hunt that bears just just started showing up on the on the deer camera this year and that was one why we picked one of the locations um so you know you have to register your um, your bait sites. Now you can run barrels. Um, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot, you have to mark them on a GPS, you know, for the DNR. So they know where your bait stations are. Um, so that's all a process. And then once we started baiting, um, you know, do you, do you have to do that? Cause it's on public? Yes. Do you have yep. to do it on private? Uh, that's a good question. I, I, that I honestly don't know. I, that's a really good question. But anyways, you, yeah, so you had yep. to do all that work, like where you were going to put your stuff. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Yep. And, uh, so yeah, start, uh, picked a couple locations and started baiting. Um, my brother, um, he was available to go up first. So he, he and my buddy Nate picked a couple areas that we knew we wanted to get in and, uh, we started baiting and then didn't take long and we had some pretty, you know, pretty active baits. Um, there was one, one bait that was just getting pounded. And so every day off, like my brother's day off, you know, or his weekend or whatever. And then my day's off we're running up, you know, it's, you know, for me, it's a little over three hours. Um, but it was, you know, make the run, go bait, come back and, uh, just keep the bears going. And then in between, if we needed help, we, we had friends that could help us out, you know? And, um, so you had, when we talk about baiting, um, like, did you have reserves up there? So you didn't have to like put it all in your truck right you just one kind of one trip or did you always have to keep loading? Yeah, no, I kind of skipped that step, I guess. But yeah, we, uh, we ended up, uh, buying uh six barrels of different baits you know um made we made a pretty good mix i think we were pretty happy with what we had and uh first initial run up got all that stuff up there and then had it set at camp so that we could just pull out all the barrels you know as we needed every time we went up um and it was it was uh good for a while and then we had bears get into camp and uh, <laughs> Our best, uh, our, our best barrel, which was our trail mix was, uh, didn't last long after they found it, they got in there and got the lid off and, um, they ended up in a matter of about four days, eight, three quarters of a 55 gallon drum of trail mix out of camp. So we had to, uh, we had to regroup there a little bit, um, running, uh, what we found this year was really good for us was anything like the nuts, you know, honey roasted nuts or, or trail mix or, because uh, acorns haven't dropped, but the, the, they yeah. hadn't when we started. Okay. Then once the once the acorn started to drop, we noticed a difference um, in our stations, you know, and um, we run cell cams on them, of course, and so we can kind of keep tabs on what's going on. And uh, yeah, what we had to once the acorn started to drop, it was we almost had to have some sort of nuts in the bait to keep them going. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Which is that's what we found. Anyway, it seemed that way. <clears throat> um, and, uh, you know, like we had, we had one bait actually ended up being the bait that I ended up killing my bear on, but that, that ended up at one point, it was so hot that they ended up ripping the eye hook right through the steel barrel and pulling it off the tree and rolling it around in, in the woods and getting it emptied out. And, uh, yeah. So, you know, from there it was, um, September 1st was opener. So we had, you know, whatever it ends up being almost three weeks of baiting and you have a pretty good idea what's going on. And we had a couple of big bears on um, one station that was actually one that my buddy Dave and his son Jack were helping us with. And um, 
So that's where I was going to hunt for opener. And we had another station that my brother, you know, we had seen a, it just stayed active, you know? And I said, you know, one of us should hunt that bait. So for opener, he hunted there and I hunted over where those two big bears were, um, but my, by my buddy Dave's place. And, um, he, the first day we got up. So Thursday we drive, um, we get set up at camp, get there in time to go out and hunt the afternoon, you know, for opener. So we did that. Neither of us saw a bear that night. Um, but we knew there was bears in the area still. And, and you know, everything changes too. When all that area is, it's public. There's a lot of guys that guide. So there's, there's quite a few changes in the woods that, you know, right, right, right at opener, you know, <clears throat> traffic picks up. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. And different baits getting fired up, you know, it's different stuff coming in the woods, different things for them to eat. And, uh, <clears throat> so we ended up, uh, neither of us saw a bear the first night. Um, he, we had one station that was just dead. That one that that barrel got tore off the tree was dead for about a week. There was nothing there. Even yeah. after we went back and reset it. And, um, by the time second day rolled around, there was a little bit of activity back on that bait. And so he went back to the second day. He went back to his same. How many bait, how many bait stations and stand sets did you have? Uh, three, three yeah. for two guys, for two guys. Okay. Hey, so we you could, could, you could go. Yeah. Trying to leave some options. Yeah. You know, when one cools off, look at another one. And, um, that's actually how mine ended up was a station that we hadn't been on cause it, cause it had died. It was the one with that barrel and, they ended up, uh, they ended up just, you know, we, we got it refilled. We took a fresh barrel of honey roasted peanuts with us when mm-hmm. we went up to try and get things going again. And, um, so that second day, the morning, let's see the morning we didn't hunt and, okay. um, it was hot. I mean, it was, it was 80 mm-hmm. second day. I think it was 86 degrees when we were up there and, so I wanted to go back where those big bears were again and try that one more time. And, uh, so I went back there and sat first night, uh, my buddy Dave, his, his son, Jack, that was helping us, he sat with me the first night and then he was tied up with baseball the second night. So his daughter sat with me and, uh, I remember we were sitting there and my brother went back to that station, um, that he had been on and we had one bear that we kept seeing there on camera that had some brown on his mane, just, you know, the camera made it look like a lot more than it was, but mm-hmm. ended up, uh, that was one bear that we knew that we wanted to try and kill if we could. And, uh, so I was sitting with, uh, with, uh, Gracie and, uh, not seeing anything, not seeing anything. And all of my phone goes and my brother, you know, he, he says, uh, he said, I just shot the one with the brown, you know? And then, so then I call him of course, and we're talking and I, I was so pumped, you know, just to have him, right out of the gate, you know, second day, neither of us had ever drawn a bear tag here. And, um, so it was, it was pretty, pretty cool for us both to be up there and then for him to kill a bear, you know, and your and, brother's name is Brian, Brian. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, obviously, so I've gotten a chance to meet Brian over the last couple of years. Super, su- both of you are super cool dudes. You're very intense. Both of you, both of you are avid 3d archers. Um, he, I don't even know how many bows he has and sights and equipment. <laughs> we'll get into your equipment in just a little bit, but it's it it almost being in the shop. You could you could live through you guys. You're talking, you know, obviously seeing you every day, but Brian would come in and you guys would like get into serious mode and talk about you know what you're doing. And obviously you talked on the phone all the time and you're there, but you went into this almost like you would prepare for any you know, like an elk trip or going to Africa or like you guys had a game plan and preparation was exceeded probably the amount of time that you hunted. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. By weeks, not, not just hours, you know? Right. But okay. So Brian called you. Yep. That's okay. Yep. Um, and thank you for that because I'm not a great storyteller. So keep keep me in track. We will both tell a story. (laughs) And, um, so yeah, I, I get a text from him, you know, and he shot. So I, so I call him and I'm just, I'm as excited as if I shot something, of course, you know? And, um, so I said, well, I'm going to sit the rest of the night and we'll get together. And luckily my buddy, J, our buddy Jason, he was at camp. And so by the time I got out of the woods that night, he, they had the bear back at camp and hanging on the pole. And, uh, so that part, I'm not much help with right now. Anyway, how, how you're right. How far are we like so quarter mile miles? 
yards. So where, so from where we, the camp is or the shack is, probably, I don't know, three miles maybe something okay. like that. Yep. Um, but really not bad. I mean, it, you could get the side by side within where the bear died. Bear only went, um, I don't know, twenty yards. I think both of our bears didn't even go twenty five yards. Yeah. And um, he uh, he had about a, I don't know, probably fifty yard. 50 yard drag to get it to the okay. side by side. So it was kind of perfect. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so yeah, that night ends up, you know, I get back and it's high fives and we're just pumped, you know, and then the work began on trying it cause it was so hot. We had right. to get it skinned and quartered. And Do you guys, did you have a reefer trailer or just coolers? We had, there was, there's two refrigerators in the, in the shack, which is okay. nice. So, yep. So we fired those up when we got up there on Thursday, it, you know, thinking, yes. we, thinking we'd be in good shape. So, um, so yeah, you know, by the time you stand around the fire and talk and, uh, you know, the neighbors come over and, you know, and, and talk some more oh, and, yeah. and then you start cutting around, you know, 11 o'clock, then it's two o'clock till you're done in the morning, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but we got it quartered, skinned quartered and in the refrigerators that night and, um, and then slept in a little bit the next morning. They went into town and, uh, got the proper documentation, you know, to get, you know, you do a, they, you gotta get a bare tooth envelope. So you send a tooth in. Um, to the DNR to have them aged and, uh, you don't get them registered and all that. And just like anything, you can register them just like you do a deer. You can register on your phone. Oh, okay. You know? Gotcha. But, um, so yeah, so then they were, they decided they were going to, um, obviously hang out the next day and just kind of do their thing. And then I was trying to make a plan on what to do, um, for myself and that one bait, um, well, actually to, to reel it back, the, <clears throat> where I was uh, hunting those two bears there's a piece of county land in between the two pieces that I was hunting and um that night that my brother shot his bear when we were heading out we saw taillights leaving from the area kind of where those two big bears were coming from because we had that that one big one on camera across a, a field and um that night when we were leaving we realized that there was somebody else in there and then we talked to somebody else that found out that yeah he, that somebody had come up and just started setting bait the opener and somebody said oh yeah somebody from the county told me there's a big bear in here so i decided to come hunt it <laughs> and which uh, is this is perfectly legal oh yeah oh yeah. absolutely okay. yeah there's nothing wrong with that just um, kind of pops your balloon though it just yeah because yeah. Uh, yeah exactly so it made me want to change gears a little bit um, from what i was doing because we didn't see a bear you know and those you know on that bait on mm-hmm. that bait at all um, once we once opener started and um so then we, um, oh, excuse me, we ended up, uh, I started looking at the cameras again and the one station that that barrel had gotten torn off the tree had a good bear that we had seen before show back up. And he was there the night, the night my brother shot his bear, there was a bear on that station. The next morning, which would have been Saturday morning. He showed up again at like seven in the morning. So shooting light mm-hmm. and I was trying to decide where to, what to do still. And then noontime, the camera goes off again and he's there again. So I said, all right, that's why, that's where I have to go. I think he's going to show up again. And, uh, so we made a plan with, with those guys helped me, uh, my brother and Jason. And, uh, we ended up decide I well I decided I said you know that's where I'm going to sit and what do we need to do we didn't have a stand in there because it you know wasn't real hot for the week prior and uh so I went back to my roots and grabbed a climber out of the out of the bunkhouse at the shack and in camp there tried to see if I could use one with my you know with my back because I'm still healing up but um tried it on the tree at camp and said, yeah, you know, this is going to work, I think. So we, we went in with a fresh bait, a bucket of peanuts and, um, I'll give Jason credit for a a single Persian donut that he set on the barrel for me thinking that was going to be the magic (laughs) trick. (laughs) And, um, uh, two things before you continue. Yeah. Talk to me. Okay. For everybody listening that doesn't know Keith, coolest cat in the world one of the most indecisive persons when it comes to hunting situations equipment i don't know how many times you switch broadheads and arrows and releases and um, not releases but 
leading up to this, I wasn't with them for the four days that they were hunting, but I can about imagine <laughs> the day before that Saturday from morning with, so you're getting cell camera pictures on your phone. Like, and now, right. now the ball is rolling and you're like, okay, what am I going to do? What, what chances do I have here? What can I bust them out? You know? So I'm getting worked up now. Now, okay, we're, in, we're approaching this evening's hunt, this afternoon, evening's hunt. Lay it out because I don't believe people understand that your pictures are on social media and we'll attach it to this podcast, but like, give me the terrain, give me the absolute dog hair thick shit that you're actually hunting in. Like lay all that out and take us on this ride. Okay. So, and yes, you're correct. I am. When it comes to setting stands, picking stands, looking at wind, I just am a disaster every time and it's I'm not getting, a bad thing no i just overthink it, it all right yep absolutely you would uh, give me ulcers and, and believe it or not you're not the first person to tell me that <laughs> <laughs> well your brother helped me out a little bit <laughs> yeah well so um so yeah that's then that afternoon um we the, the train i'll start there it's uh it's actually not that hard to get to it's off a of gravel road it's um probably 150 yards off a of gravel road where i'm hunting um uh just a an actual little light, like easy walk, little grass meadow up into you hit the edge of the edge of the woods. And then it's, then it's thick. Um, and then it butts up to a cedar swamp. And that's of course why we're hunting there. And, um, all season, that was the buggiest station we had. And I was freaking out about even hunting there. Cause mm. it, you know, um, but, uh, it, it's thick, but it's, manageable you okay. know um we picked a spot that would work where if we had to we could shoot and uh so we go in with uh climber fresh bait then my brother and, and then jason came with and you know helped me and i literally got the we got the climber on the on the tree just because we didn't want to be clanking around with setting stands and you know, whatever else it was, let's just take this. We'll go. I can get 10 feet off the ground to get above the, the underbrush and get me to a spot I can shoot. And that's all I need. And so that's what we did. And I will tell you for me to get 10 feet off the ground with a climber was a miracle. It took me, I used to climb 30 feet everywhere mm -hmm. I went and it took me longer to get 10 feet than it ever did just because, you know, I'm trying to, trying to get back into it. So um, so I get set sweating, you know, um, those guys are, you know, all right, you know, shoot me a text. Let me know what's going on. And, uh, so I get set, have my bow, have, you know, my pack, I've got my thermocell. Um, I am, I said where I set up was where I thought the bears were coming from. I set up where they should cut my wind. That's where I picked the tree and I set up 14 yards from the bait and, uh, ended up not necessarily working that way, but it worked. Um, so it was probably six o'clock or so. Um, the Cedar Swamp is to the south. Let me see, southwest of me. And uh, no, southeast of me. And uh, was expecting the bears to come from the southwest and kind of cut my wind. And, and I thought it'd be no problem either way. Yeah. And um, about six o'clock or so I hear back in that swamp, I just hear stuff crashing and breaking and, and, uh, you know, like, like something clumsy coming through the woods. And I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. You should never hear a bear coming, you know? Right. And, uh, so kind of just played it off and didn't worry too much about it, but kept my eyes open. And, then uh, about an hour, hour later, 45 minutes later, um, catch a glimpse of a bear coming and coming from straight dead downwind to me. And I thought, well, this is going to be bad, you know, but he come in and it was a boar and, um, started towards the bait, you know, working his way up through, but the whole, the entire time he was coming, he was just, he'd take a couple steps and then turn around and look the other way and, mm -hmm. or turn off and he's zigzagging, you know, and I thought, <clears throat> oh, if he's, catching my wind and he's not sure if he's going to even come in, you know, I wasn't, I thought, well, this might not go well, but, and, um, the funny thing was as he's coming, I am now shooting right hand, as you know, mm -hmm. and I'm so used to shooting left hand over the last eight, nine years that when I, in my 
bow set up in the tree and the stand, everything was just so awkward. I'm reaching for the bow. I'm like, Oh man, what am I doing here? You know, so right. relearning all that. And, uh, but I got set and he was coming and I thought, okay, he's going to get there. And, uh, the, you'd shoot him. The, you already had in your mind. Oh, to yeah, shoot yeah, Okay. Yep. So he you're, was, you're rocked and cocked and ready to go. Yep. Okay. Yep. Once I saw him, I said, yeah, he's, you know, he's a shooter. So I'm going to uh, get myself ready and have an arrow knocked, obviously of my release. And, He's, uh, he's working in and he gets to about 25 yards and he's still in, you know, in the thick stuff and, um, waiting for him to step out. And it's pretty good opening where the bait is, you know, cause they've cleared out. They've just matted it down, you know, it's just dirt. And, right. uh, so he's, I don't know, half a step from coming out. So I, I see him start to make a move and I start to put tension on the release and figure out as soon as he steps out, I'll shoot him. And right about then I catch a glimpse off to my straight south of uh, another bear. And I thought, what the heck? I didn't expect to see two. You know, it's the first we've seen two on that station in a while. Yeah. And they look like twins. And they were both boars. They were both nice bears. And uh, this other bear comes in, and he was not having it. And he come through. There was a down tree between he and the other bear. And he came straight through that down tree. I mean, there was limbs flying. There was, I mean, he just come barreling and, you know, and you could hear the whole, I mean, just, oh, oh, you know, coming in and, <laughs> and just totally ran this bear. I mean, clean out of there. I don't know where that bear ended up. I got, you see dust trail and he was gone, you know? And, uh, and then he just stood there and I thought, holy God, you know, I wasn't expecting to see that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> and this all, I mean, he was like say he was that was all was 20 yards from me you know right. and uh so then i'm i'm kind of settled you know so okay what's this bear gonna do i thought you know he's just protecting the bait he may just peel out of here now you know mm -hmm. and maybe not even just go lay back down and uh he turned right around and just started into the bait and i thought okay this is gonna happen and uh comes in and he sets uh stops right just pretty much right where the other bear stopped and so i settled and he takes one more step and I said, okay, he committed and he's out. So I drew and, uh, put my pin on him, just use my 20 yard pin. And, uh, he was broadside half a step from the barrel. And I, so I settled in and I was, I made sure I worked through my process. First animal right handed again, you know, yeah. and, uh, settled and just getting ready to squeeze the pin and, or squeeze the trigger. And he, kind of takes a half a like step not even a step and just kind of turns quarters into me just a hair with his front you know side and i re asked you know re-evaluated and thought okay i never moved the pin i think i should still clear the shoulder i think we'll be all right and so uh shooting uh 50 <clears throat> pounds and i wanted to make sure i was going to be in a good spot so i squeezed it let it go and i watched the lighted knock bury into him and it was just in the fur. It didn't get a full pass through, but the, you know, the knock buried up to the knock. And uh, he roared, and wheeled, and went over that down tree that he just came through. And then just rolled two, three times. And didn't, I mean, he didn't go 25 yards. And then, you know, big death moan. And uh, it was over. I was like, oh, that was fun. <laughs> and i was it was i was pumped i it was a really the shake started yeah, it was I, you know i didn't get the shakes but i was pumped like i mean yeah. i could hear my just hear my Let's heart go. <laughs> yeah and then it was the the texts and this you know it's, and the funny thing was i so i texted my brother at, right away well actually i called him yeah and uh um he uh yeah you know and there i could hear him yeah. and jason there so what they had done when when they dropped me off they went back and they said he's gonna shoot a bear tonight so they got a deer cart ready because this is where i was hunting you can't take uh it was wma so you can't take a um um uh, motorized a, vehicle. atv in right yep. so we had to do it all by hand so got a deer cart ready and so that was they went back to camp dropped me or they dropped me went back to camp just got prepped and we're ready waiting yeah. for a text you they know knew. and they, uh, knew. they said that when as soon as i called <clears throat> yep it was high fives and they were cheering and just like i was you know i was all excited for him when he shot his so and uh was it a when did the emotional uh how do i say this when did the emotional breakdown come like we obviously had some time to sit there yeah before anybody came or yeah. did you get down right away 
I waited a little bit. I didn't wait very long. I made a couple of calls. I called my dad. Yeah. I knew he was going to be pumped every time I kill something. Yep. I called dad. Very um, cool. Yeah. He, uh, that was pretty fun. He was, he was pumped. You could hear him just, yeah. you know, you could hear him telling mom, you know, and send pictures, send pictures. Yeah. I said, I will. And, uh, I, so I called him, I talked to my brother. I said, Hey, you know, I don't know where that other boar is. You know, he may still be in here. Um, so just when you come in, be careful. And, uh, well, in the meantime, I said, I'll shoot. I'm going to get down. I, you know, I want to get ready for when they're in here. And you wouldn't believe how much faster I got down the tree than oh. I did going up. <laughs> Where you I said, well, this, I was like, this climber's easy. <laughs> <laughs> Shot a bar. I'm going to get down. Yeah. Were you packing? Yeah, I was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I just in, I didn't know. Like I'd never done it. I'm half scared to death. Like even at the zoo, yeah. you know, just it just they, it's weird, right? And then the very first time I ever heard a death moan, um, your I think it was your brother's bear. The yeah. video you showed yep. me. Okay, so I grew up around cattle my entire life been around it and i thought like when you guys said a death moan like a scream or something mm-hmm. i didn't know you right, know what i mean right. i didn't look it up but it it wasn't it was eerie but i knew i was right. prepared for it right yeah and what you told me is it's the air leaving their lungs they're they're passed away yeah that's what i've been told i you know who knows it's uh it's but you're right it is a little eerie you know, and it, and it it's sounded not the most kinda, fun part, kind of like a a cow beller, but a little bit more of yeah. a, a. I'm done. Yeah, you know, I'd be, bleh, whatever yep. you want to say. But um, you heard that. Yep, yep. Which is great, right? You don't enjoy hearing it, but you know that it's a done deal. Well, as a bear right hunter, yeah, yeah, because yep. tracking those things through the stuff you're hunting, and you know, it's it's hot and there's right. condensation, and the blood is blood, right? But everything's green and right. alive and thick, and so yeah, it's and like it's usually, more of a ease. Yeah, ease exactly. Yep, yeah. yeah. and they're usually you know in the th- like the thick, tall yeah. grass. You know what I mean? That's or the swamp. You know, um, so you don't want to be tracking them if you don't have to. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. What, uh, okay. Uh, equipment rundown. Obviously we know you're using a climber and you had, um, lightweight sit gun base layers, you know, cause yep. it was hot. Yeah, exactly. Put it over. But like, okay. Your people are gear junkies like I am. Yep. Run me through your equipment. Yep. Um, so, and, okay. Let's Keith won't tell you this, but this year or the last two years ago, how long has it been? Two years? What's year, that? Your surgery? So, um, a year. It was a year ago in June. Yeah. You had to shoot left-handed because previous injuries to your shoulder. Yep. And then you shot left-handed ever since I've ever known you until yep. this year. You had to go low poundage. Like I was here the first day you pulled back a Genesis after the surgery. And then <laughs> yeah. we kind of progressed. And you actually had bows already here. Correct? Y- yes. And yeah. then you had to get, you got with the bows that you wanted and we we're, you're trying, you're working with all of us and you're like, okay, I need a lighter bow, not quite the stabilizer weight. I usually run. I need a light sight. I mean, I don't know how many times we weighed different sites right. to get, like we needed a setup that you could handle. And it's not that you're carrying it into the woods and doing that, but when you're at full draw, yeah, the fatigue, but you, in a, in a, I would say in a month period, you got stronger than I ever would have thought you were, right. You were drawing 50 pounds, but you probably could have shot more. Your yep. speed wasn't where it, you usually are at, but you were shooting. You take me through your equipment. Yeah. That's the reason behind what he's shooting as of that bear hunt. Sure. Yep. Yep. So uh ended up shooting that with an RX-7. Um, when I built it, like you say, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to be able to anything away from my body because my core got so run down after all the surgery. Everything away from my body is the hardest. So at full draw trying to hold the bow up and get it on target was, was the first big challenge. Drawing the boat was actually easier, but, um, ended up going with, um, I have an AccuTouch on it, XL, um, carbon bar, um, integrated rest. Um, and then I ran just a back bar. I'm actually doing that on all my bows this year. And it's actually, I'm kind of getting used to it. Yeah. Um, I, it, it shooting 50 pounds and, um, running a micro diameter arrow, running a hundred grain kudu, uh, fixed point for fixed blade. Oh no, I'm sorry for bear. I ran a 125. Okay. Um, hundred because I wanted your FOC a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. it was more so just get a, a little bigger cut. Okay. And I knew that I wasn't going to be shooting 
distance. I knew, I knew the yardage mm-hmm. I was going to shoot. Right. So I didn't need to worry about that. So a little bit heavier head didn't hurt. Um, I think I ended up, I think I ended up somewhere around two, 255 feet a second at 50 pounds, 28 and a half inch draw. And, uh, the end of, I ended up, the broadhead made it through both sides of the bear, split a rib on the way out. Um, so at 50 pounds, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, I oh, think, I think absolutely. That, I think you did a really good job, you know, and you're a fixed head guy at most. Yeah. For the most, most part. Time. Yep. Yep. I like playing with them and making them work. Um, but did you have to, with those 125s, they're a little bit bigger cut. Mm-hmm. Did you have to fletch? Like you, you're kind of like me, you like to play and what, what did you end up on your fletchings with yeah. such a small diameter arrow? Yep. I ended up running a, what a hybrid 26. Uh, or no, 23, 23. Yeah. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> ended up working fine, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit. And of again, helical. you're, you're shooting under 40 yards or 30 right. yards yep. most of the time. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I did, they ran better. Like I tried, um, a couple different smaller veins too, and, uh, they ended up working the best. They, I did a little bit of broadhead tuning to make them work and I was shooting them out to 40 and they were working great. So I knew I was good. Yeah. And you probably wouldn't have took a shot over 40. No, like no, I wouldn't have. Stuff. I'll be honest with you. I don't like, <clears throat> I think over 20, I think that was all I was going to do. Right. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, it worked, worked perfect. Really. I, I, you know, ended up nicking the heart, you know, and then obviously running the rest of it came in just above like the back of the shoulder and then came, you know, went out the like mid middle of the ribs or maybe last third of the ribs, you know, um, because he was ended up quartering just a hair. So, that ended up working really well. Um, I'm going to run a similar setup for whitetail. I'm just going to cut it, make it a little bit faster and run it, run a hundred grain. Um, okay. And, um, which you've already been whitetail hunting right. <clears throat> yep. last night. Yep. Last um, night. what I, I have to ask you a question cause I'm not a fixed blade guy. Mm-hmm. Um, I, but I'm not a bear hunter either. And I've never shot low poundage. I have a boy that does and my wife does. They shoot fixed blades for the same concept, kind of banked it off your, your deal. Was there a lot of blood? Like, it, I don't... There actually was, yes. I One thing I hear um, once in a while about the, you know, about a fixed head in general is not as much blood. Um, I, I'll take that a lot of times over, like for what I'm doing, shooting a low poundage. I was, I was worried that if I shot an expandable that I wouldn't get, get through the other side for sure. It might, it might poundage. Um, when, when that bear went, over a down tree you know and he died you know it was kind of this is not real fair because he didn't make it very far but from my stand i could see blood on that tree you know and i and i don't mean like through the binoculars i mean there was Mm -hmm. patches of blood like big patches of blood you know and um so yeah it did real. i was super super impressed with how it worked and um that's another it's like i said I'll, i'll continue to use those heads for and it's really good for guys that come in the shops because they get different opinions you know right. I, there's a reason that i shoot mechanical heads and there's a reason you shoot fixed heads and and we can associate with every archer that walks in the door right i don't know how many times i've looked over my shoulder and said guy goes well I, i'm really interested in fixed blades i'm i can take you down the path but i don't have any experience with it and i just say hey, keith you know yeah. this this where and that and obviously you sharpen yep things unbelievably <laughs> sharp i gotta ask you this <clears throat> i've never had bear eating wise you're going to uh, consuming you you guys cut up the bear it's a beautiful look at the pictures right now it's probably on the cover photo of on your truck or wherever you're <laughs> listening to this but um beautiful beautiful bear you're getting them mounted i'm gonna do a rug a rug yeah okay. he was the coat was really nice so yeah, he, he's just beautiful. I, I don't know bears, but he's beautiful. Right. He, he looks like the one we got in the shop, you know, just really sleek and shiny and clean and a big old head on him. Yeah. So you got him cut up. You guys got the meat. It's like, what is it? I hear the word bear ham. Yeah, that's like, yeah. what are, where are you going with your meat? Well, most, like, what do you do with it? Yeah, most of it I'm going to do like whitetail. I'll process, you know, everything's packaged in, in my freezer now. Yeah, uh, I ended up you know, same, same concept. I'll do a bunch of steaks. I'll do some stew meat. I'll do some roasts. So I did, I should say, uh, the loins obviously keep the good stuff and then make, I've got a bunch, you know, cubed up and trimmed up for, for grinding, you know, for making sausage or whatever I want to do with it. 
And then, uh, yeah, Dan, Dan has a super special secret Mm -hmm. place to take, to get a bear ham done. So, and I know, I don't know if he wants me to name anybody, but you know, (laughs) I think everybody will know who I'm talking about, but, uh, he, uh, yeah. So I'm going to do that. So I took on that for that. I did a, um, one of the rear quarters I took, um, jointed it, you know, left the ball on the end of the, the shank and then cut the other end off part way down. And I've got about a 25, I'd say pound ham that I'm going to take in, have cured and smoked. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. Dang. And if it's no good, I'm going to blame Dan. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Good. I know it's going to be good. good. Yep. <clears throat> um, we're going to wrap this deal up, but did a phenomenal story. Awesome. Awesome job. Congratulations. Thank you. And I know like most of us, you know, we get done hunting and, and it lives for about five days and we got pictures and it's cool. It's just another, another accolade or resume builder. Correct. This one is a little bit different because, and, and I know that I'm kind of stepping out of my place to say this, but when you had your surgery, there was a point where we didn't know. You knew in your mind, your heart, that you were you're gonna bow hunt again. But there was a moment, there was there was a period of time where we're not sure if Keith is if he's gonna be a crossbow guy the rest of his life, a gun hunter. And to take shooting an upright compound bow away from somebody who's so passionate is, you know, it's like robbing a child. It's it's mm-hmm. you know, kicking a guy's dog. It you don't do that. <laughs> especially yep. when you this now is your life. It, it was a, a small part of your life before, mm-hmm. not an occupation, but now it's a living. And this is, you know, tried and true. You, sh- you had very good success with a crossbow, but you, we, you didn't have the same feeling. It wasn't right. And where I'm getting at with this is this is your first success, first hunt yeah. since the surgery with the compound bow, completely switched back to right-handed, uh, took you two, three sits, Yep. Successful. That accolade, that, that gold medal is more important, you know, than the bear rug that you're going to have for the rest of your life and the ham that we're going to enjoy together. But like that is a phenomenal feat to come back. Literally you were bedridden for how long and you work from home for how long Yep. and then come in the shop and still to this day, you can't, you know, lift over a certain amount of weight and you're back. I wouldn't say hundred percent, but you're back to at we're, least 90. We're getting you know? there. Yeah. Yeah. Better than before the surgery at this point. Yeah. For and, sure. and so it worked. I mean that, that to me, I take more, more out of that story, that portion of it mm-hmm. than, you know, being successful and killing a cool bear. And it took you five years to get the tag. And, and it, so I appreciate you. And again, like I say, is you're, you're not a guy that's going to boast about it all the time. So I'm doing it for you, but thank you. That is a, uh, a very, very great accomplishment to go through what you've gone through or going through and to be right back in the wheelhouse and to be successful. Yeah. And along with Brian's, he shot a phenomenal bear as well. Yep. Um, yeah, he did. His bear was very nice. I, yeah, I have seen him since he killed We talked about it, didn't we? Yeah, I don't I think, know if he's been in or yeah, not. Yeah, I think he stopped in one. Yeah, well, maybe not. I don't know. Anyways, um, great group of guys. Great, great story. I know this is a little bit shorter podcast than uh, all of our others, but we wanted to just give you a little story, a little, little thing that's going on, and uh, we're going to have more. We got Mr. <laughs> Alex up in Brainerd right now that's already has four tags filled. Oh, he's a, he's a, and, yeah. and he shot a phenomenal bear on video. He's, yeah, he actually killed, I think, the first day. Yeah, he had like an all-day sit. It was the first day or second day, like yeah. 2.30 or something, 3 yeah. o'clock in the afternoon on video. On Yeah, super cool. So Alex is a, he's a guy that we haven't. He's a savage. Yeah, he's very, very, yeah, he's winning. He's, that's oh, right. that's what we'll, I was going to talk hey, about before we'll we go. Him. We'll get him. All right. If you are a listener and you come into the shop, we have what we call a shop-to-shop traveling trophy competition. It's a point scale. We can talk about it later on that. But we encourage you. To encourage us to ask what the standings are. It's something that we're not going to be on social media. It's going to be shop to shop. But it's Weight Parks guys versus Rogers guys versus Brainerd's guys on everything harvested this fall from the start of season in August to end of season December 31st. Yep. And it's in its other states too. It's not just Minnesota. Right now, Tail Tucked Brainerd is winning. As of today. Yep. As, as of today. today, which is 9 23, 
22. I saw lots of points walking around in the woods last night, and I don't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're going we're gonna to keep that. Ask us about our Shop to Shop Traveling Trophy competition. Keith, as always, phenomenal job. Thank you for being on. Thanks, buddy. And everybody listening, thank you for being a part of Archery Country Podcast. Thank you for listening to Archery Country Podcast. 